On today's episode, we're going to be talking about model organisms. So first, what are they? As you can see in this picture, some of the model organisms include the mouse, frog, mustard plant or arabidopsis, roundworm, fruit fly, yeast, and the zebrafish. These represent a larger group of organisms beyond themselves and serve as models for whole, intact organisms. They function as genetic models for processes of interest and promote comparative work on a larger scale, allowing scientists to integrate various disciplinary approaches across species. You may have heard of something called an experimental organism. We're going to talk about the difference between experimental and model organisms. Experimental organisms include non-human species that can be studied or manipulated in a controlled environment, such as a lab. Cons of experimental organisms include fewer resources compared to model organisms. Experimental organisms don't necessarily have to be representative of species other than themselves. They are studied as a means to investigate a specific phenomenon or as an interesting organism in and of itself. In contrast, model organisms have different key characteristics. They are taken to represent a larger group of organisms beyond themselves. They perform processes thought to be shared across several or all other types of organisms, particularly those processes whose molecular bases can be articulated. Why do we use them? They serve as models for a range of systems and processes that occur in living organisms, such as genetics, development, physiology, evolution, and ecology. They also have experimental characteristics that closely relate to their power as genetic tools, such as small physical and genomic sizes, low cost to breed, maintain, and transport, short generation times and life cycles, high fertility rates, high mutation rates, and high susceptibility to techniques for genetic modification. Model organisms allow researchers to create unified communities with strong social ties that can then share their findings with one another. For instance, the Model Organism Screening Center for the Undiagnosed Disease Network deal with Drosophila or fruit flies and zebrafish or Donnie Orero. Additionally, working with Arabidopsis, another model organism, there is the Arabidopsis Information Resource and the Arabidopsis Biological Resource Center. Many of the genetic tools necessary are already available for these organisms. For example, in the Arabidopsis lab that I work in, we ordered Arabidopsis seed with our mutation of interest so we could study the phenotype using reverse genetics. Some more common examples of model organisms include Drosophila, which is also called fruit fly. And this is used as a model organism because each female fly can lay up to 100 eggs per day for up to 20 days. And it only takes 10 days for an embryo to develop into a fertile adult fly. This means that they can generate large numbers of embryos and flies for an experiment. Another model organism is the zebrafish, or Doniorario. These are good model organisms because their embryos develop externally and are transparent, meaning that they can be viewed and manipulated at all stages. This model organism can be used for genetic analysis and has a generation time of two to three months and can produce up to 200 eggs a week. Finally, we have Arabidopsis thaliana. Arabidopsis is considered a superb model species in plant biology because it is closely related to several hundred thousand plant species. It has a small genome that's convenient for gene cloning, which at the time of its initial use as a model organism was difficult for large genome organisms. It's also physically small, so it's good for experiments that require a large number of plants, like mutagenesis. Additionally, Arabidopsis can be transformed easily by agrobacterium, which is able to transfer its DNA to higher plants by spraying a bacteria with a plasmid that houses a gene of interest on the flowers and selecting for this gene in succeeding generations. It's important to note that Arabidopsis thaliana was the first plant and third multicellular organism to be completely sequenced. 
preceded only by roundworms and fruit flies. And finally, it's the most studied flowering plant by total publications, beating out maize, corn, tomato, peas, and rice.